I get this question all of the time. Hey, Glenda, what about investing? What about loans? What about grants? What about equity? My question to you, do you have a business that's producing any of the financial instruments where you can get a piece of the action on that stuff? If you don't, why are you asking about it? In this video, I'm going to discuss business loans, investors, equity, and a whole lot more because a lot of people are trying to do some stuff that they haven't trained for. Hey, this is Glendon Cameron, founder of HustlersKungFu.com. Check it out. What you should do is take yourself over to HustlersKungFuLifeSkills.com and grab those free 19 courses. What will they do? They'll help you fix your credit. They'll help you start a business. Shoot, they'll even give you relationship advice. Yeah, that's a lot of stuff there. Amazing value and it's all yours for free. However, I do ask two things, that you refer two people to this channel and if, once again, if you find value in HustlersKungFuLifeSkills.com, pay what you want. No, no, I'm not gonna come hunt you down and try to make you pay anything. It's only if you find value will you contribute to HustlersKungFuLifeSkills.com. All right, all right, first link below. I'll see you in the video. You have a lot of people who want to play above their pay grade with some of this stuff. Now, I'm going to give you my philosophy and I'm going to give you what I believe to be some good guidelines, which I follow. When you start your business, you should put off getting loans, bring in investors as long as possible. And if you can manage to organically fund yourself, which is revenue and profits from your business even better because what happens when you do a loan you go to the bank or you go to some friends or you go to the family and there's a agreement right so what you're doing is giving them a back door into taking equity out of your company if you default or taking the assets out of your company whereas if you bring in investors you're giving a piece of your company up for that investment. And some founders, people of companies you've heard about, when they had the liquidity event, they, they, they got like $500,000 and it was a $50,000, a $50 million deal. It was a $10 million deal. Some people barely got like maybe $100,000 because what happened is they started asking for money sooner than they should have. So each round, when you hear this uh, seed round and round A, investor round, each time a round happens, equity in the company is given up. So you could start that company in your basement and own it 100%. Then you can be in business two years, then go out and ask somebody for a loan or to contribute to your company and you only own 50% now. The higher the investment, the more equity that you give up. A good book to read about this is Rework by the founder of 37 Signals. Rework. Rework. I'm saying it three times because people are like, what did you say? Rework. It's on Amazon. You can get it on um, Audible. All right. Now, you should put these events off as long as possible because some people are cheating. And I'm gonna give you an example of cheating. If you started a company 12 months ago and you took a vacation, you're cheating. I don't see it. And you know, I have never had an investor in any of my companies. I've never given up any equity. So if I failed, I failed and it was all on me. And you have a lot of people out there who are looking at creating companies to be acquired. That is their liquidity event to be acquired versus building something that serves people and puts out a worthy product. So a lot of that nonsense going on and there's a big bubble with that because we are in a recession. And now I know people are like, huh? Because there are some people who are not in the recession. There are some people such as myself who have refused to participate. But we're there and as the contraction happens, 
a lot of this money is just going to dry up. But if you grew your business organically, you don't have any loans, you don't have any debt, while everyone else is contracting, you can expand, you can grow. Why? Because everything is cheaper. Talent's cheaper. Property's cheaper. Rent's cheaper. Cost of goods are cheaper in a recession. That's why all of the savvy investors, the real investors, the Warren Buffetts of the world, the Carl Icons of the world are sitting on billions of dollars of cash waiting for this to happen because they can take their 60 billion or 10 billion or 20 billion and put it into the market and turn it into 100 billion, uh, 80 billion, 30 billion, just like that in a matter of 18 months because everything is so cheap. And as the compression starts to loosen up and prices go up, the value of their investments go up. Now, don't get a loan. If you feel that you need a loan, do this. Go out and get two full-time jobs. Because if you like, fuck this, then you're not really serious about your business. You're looking at someone who had three jobs at one time. Three, yes. Two full, one part-time. I don't want to hear it. If you're serious about your shit, then you will do what it takes to get that done. If you're like, oh, I can't do that. I don't think you're cut out to be an entrepreneur. I don't think you're cut out to be a hustler. Straight up, because, see, everyone looks at the residual and the results of hustling, which is nice things, money, prestige, fame, right? Well, success is... Working those two jobs. Success is working a 24-hour day. Success is not hanging out, missing birthdays, making sacrifice. See, the S in success is often for sacrifice. And that's what people who really made it big have done. And if that stuff concerns you or troubles you, you ain't cut out for this, baby. You ain't built for this. And And this is cool. OK, that's cool. I'm not I'm not not saying anything bad about you, but you should realize where you fit into the food chain. Now, with investors, uh, I got to come in. And once again, I'm not trying to marginalize you. But if you're not talking about investing 50 to 500,000. And you're you're an investor. If you invest 500 bucks, you're an investor. But what are your returns? You invest $5,000, even if you got 30%, that's like, what, $150 in a year? See what I'm saying? So while you're thinking about it, and you're an investor, but you have to look at, is that money really going to make me a lot of money? I have spent, I'm a member of one Facebook group. It's 100 bucks a month. So my investment thus far is about $1,600, right? That investment has made me $30,000 for being there. No, I'm not telling you the group. Find it on your own if you want, you know, because wait a minute. It's all out here on the internet, right? It's all out here on the internet. So you should have no problem finding out what that group is, what it does, and how it helps you make money. Yeah, I'm being an ass on purpose because since it's all out here for free, good luck with that. Um, but yeah, it's been responsible for $30,000 in income, the principles, the things that I've gotten from that group. So let's say I took that $1,600 and put it in the stock market. Am I going to get 30 grand? Mm -mm. Let's say I put it in the bond. Nope. Mutual funds. Nope. Index fund. Nope. Gold. Nope. Having a business and I'll qualify that. Having a successful business is the best investment you can make. And I'm going to prove it to you. If you own a business and I want you to put it in the comments and you own a successful business, who calls you stockbrokers? Hey, I got this really good deal for you, Jimmy. Once we reached a certain level in the business, I started getting these calls from stockbrokers, financial people. I started getting stuff in the mail. Once you get to a certain level, they come find you. They be looking for you and they be looking for doctors, business owners, entrepreneurs, because those folks make bank. They go where the money is. 
Now, if you're not getting this kind of solicitations or you go to the bank and they're not offering you private client or wealth management services, you are not in the club. And the threshold for that shit's pretty low. Seriously, you go to the bank and you make a deposit of 20, 25,000, boom. The branch manager's gonna be on you or the teller's gonna be on you. It's like, hey, let me refer you to this, 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 this. 25. And if you've never had this kind of stuff, like, well, hey, you know, here's private banking. I mean, I'm just saying. So look at building a business. Look at creating something that doesn't exist or making something that exists better. That's the best investment that you can have. And that's it. This is probably one of the shortest videos I've ever done. Don't get any loans. Don't go into debt. Hustle. Sweat equity. Get as much as you can from what you have before you start trying to get some money out of somebody based on your dream and whim. Also, in parting before I go, if... You have a winning business that's making money. You'll have people throwing money at you. They want to partner with you. So success begets success and success attracts success. So just saying. All right. If you like this video and you should be sure to comment, like and subscribe.